question of the day and as i had mentioned earlier we're talking about cervical cancer because we feel that this is a very important topic that we need to create an awareness around mostly because the uh, number of diagnoses around this the cases are arising so we need to know what we need to do what you need to look out for and everything else so for this particular topic cervical cancer we have an expert with us she's an oncology nurse uh rose ah, welcome Hi. thank you so much stephanie mm -hmm. it's a pleasure meeting you again okay great yeah. uh, yes we we <laughs> did have an interview <laughs> with you actually yes, so they they have seen you okay. here right here on this uh station uh, we were talking we're just creating a, an awareness around cancer I generally so today we, we, are, we are narrowing it down to, to cervical cancer. Sure, sure. So tell us, um, where, where do I start? Look, let's start with you as a nurse, you know. <laughs> why, why did you decide uh, to, you know, to specialize in, in cancer? Okay. I've been a nurse for a, quite some time. Mm -hmm. I am actually an active nurse that is licensed and practicing. Mm -hmm. I work in Maragua. It's in Moranga County. Uh, previously, I've been working in the reproductive health unit. And I think this is where the whole passion, even more so about cervical cancer and breast cancer came along. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And during my day-to-day -day life, you'll do the, the routine screening to women. And you get like, yeah, there's a lesion which is maybe suspicious of cancer. And that is where I'll be stuck. What else do I do for that mother? What, do I, what else do I do for that client? So that is when I decided I just need to go get more knowledge so that I can be able to maneuver through the call cancer issue. When like you get a client, mm -hmm. where do you move from that? What do you advise the client? What, how do you walk the journey with the client? Because with a lot of knowledge, you're mm -hmm. able to impact more positively on their lives. So that is where I drew my, my passion in mm -hmm cancer okay. and i hope to to fry with it and touch so many lives yeah you're yeah. clearly you're yeah. clearly touching many lives the fact mm. that you're here and you know that's that's a, that's a great thing that you're doing mm -hmm. we celebrate you so let's um let's talk about cervical cancer okay. what is that's what's cervical cancer what type of cancer is this okay maybe we can first define what is what, what is a cervix Mm -hmm. so that you can be able to know where we are coming from. Okay. So basically, cervix is just one of the organs in the reproductive system. Actually, we say it's the neck of the, of the, of the uterus, just to use some common words that are not complicated. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you find the cervix at the, at, the, at the vaginal, at the end of the vagina. It connects the vagina to the, to the uterus. So it's that in between. And that is where the cancer is mostly found. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about cervical cancer, we are really dealing with the reproductive health system in the females. And this is definitely that. The, the cells in the cervix have changed. If you remember us discussing about cancer last time, we said it's just the abnormality in the cells that occur in a certain organ. So specifically, mm -hmm. there's the abnormality of the cells around the cervical region okay yeah so th that is basically what is cervical cancer mm -hmm. yeah now uh what are the causes of cervical cancer because mm. i know for most ca you know I, I it's hard to say that this is the cause of cancer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it just comes but do we have uh, no reasons for causes for cervical cancer do you know why i love talking about cervical cancer tell me because we have a definite cause Wow, okay, yeah, we do. We do have a definite cause. Mm -hmm. We don't jungle around cervical cancer. It is definitely caused by HPV, which is human papilloma virus, an infection. Where that does is it come it. from? It's not genetic, it's not hormonal dependent. Uh -huh. We know what causes cervical cancer. HPV is HPV the cause is of the cervical, cause cervical cancer. cancer. Yeah. What is this uh, HPV then? Where does it come from? It's a virus. It's a virus that, that is in the body, but now when it increases and causes the infection, that is when it causes the infection, the infection with the HPV, that is what causes the, 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 the cervical cancer. But for any woman in the reproductive age or any lady who is sexually active, most likely if we do a HPV test, we'll get her 
the human papilloma virus. But since our immunities are so strong, our bodies are able to create the, 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 the mm -hmm. our bodies are able to create the virus by itself. That is the the body, the immunity is able to fight against them. But now when the infection persists, that is when it progresses to causing cancer. All right. Yeah. So for because now we want to, to, to get to that point where we prevent um, mm -hmm. cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. So how does this HPV uh, infection um, show itself? How mm -hmm. do you know this are the, you know, these are the symptoms of, mm -hmm. of HPV mm -hmm. and this will likely lead to cervical cancer. What mm -hmm. do you need to look out for? So when you talk about HPV and infection, eh? first what is the mode of transmission? Mm -hmm. Mostly it is sexually transmitted. Okay. Yes, it is sexually transmitted, but still the virus can survive in on any other surface. And so you can get it from any other surface. That is where you see, like, when you go to the hospitals and we have to cabalize the, the beds that you're using to screen our patients so that I rose, who was screened prior to you, Ayata, mm -hmm. will not leave my HPV virus and you'll come to the same coach end. Uh -huh. But basically, I'll say with maybe a 99%, it is sexually transmitted. transmitted so that is the main so, yeah so if it's sexually transmitted uh -huh. it means that men also men thank are the carriers you. thank you tell us about it <laughs> <laughs> thank you and mm -hmm. this is where we go wrong because we talk so much about cervical cancer and we get the men out of the talk yes so men are the carriers but because maybe of their system <laughs> of their reproductive system you get that they are not they are not they don't get the same terms they mm -hmm. become symptomatic, asymptomatic. They don't have the symptoms at all. Okay. But they still have the HPV within them. So my partner, who is Ayata's partner, mm -hmm. who is somebody's else partner, mm -hmm. me as Rosa has the infection with HPV, my partner gets it from me. Okay. And then pop. He carries it to, to me. Ayata. And then carries it to the next person. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's a little bit like, you know, now that now it makes sense because being a virus, just like HIV, yeah. you know how it's transmitted from yes. one person to the other to yes. the other. The yes. only yes. difference yes. is that yes. for the carrier, the yeah. man, it might not affect them. It might not affect them. Mm -hmm. But did you, did you also know that HPV is one of the causative all infections for penile cancer? So it's that you should also. know, uh -huh. so that the men don't go bragging around, despite the low percentage in penile cancers, but yes, HPV is one of the it's causes. It's one of the causes. Yeah, so the more we are talking about cervical cancer and women in HPV, I think the men should be also in the front line doing it. Uh -huh. yeah. Because it also affects them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you ask me about the signs and symptoms, all the prevailing signs. Maybe I can just touch with a few for the, for the ladies. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically, you start with menstrual irregularities. That is one of the most, Common. and it was, it's actually a warning sign. Previously, you've had your menses right, regular, after every 26 days, 28, 35 days. Mm -hmm. And then from nowhere, you start getting the irregularities. You're having intramenstrual braiding. You're having spottings from nowhere. Most of the women go to the hospital and you're like, oh, it's hormonal imbalance, blah, 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 mm. blah. But I think, like we said last time, eh? Let it be at the back of, this, of our minds that it could be this, but equally could be cancer. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the, actually the basic, women will come to the hospital and they'll tell you that, oh, I started having menstrual, intramenstrual breedings, all postmenopausal breeding. Mm -hmm. So where we make menopause, kabisa, and pop from nowhere, you, you start, start having bleeding. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that is one of the main causes. Mm -hmm. The other cause will be sexual, when you're having your sexual intercourse, eh? Mm -hmm. You get some pain. I think nat naturally, you said it's the teens, so it, I don't have to blush away from this. <laughs> yes, we naturally. are talking to the teens. <laughs> yeah, they should know. Naturally, yeah. sexual intercourse should be pleasurable, mm -hmm. but not painful. Okay. So when you start feeling pain, and you're like, even you want to resist from it, eh? mm -hmm. that should alert you. Where is the pain coming from? With all the mechanisms that go around the sexual activities, it should not be painful at all. Mm -hmm. And then you have some 
post quite as all post sexual bleeding it could be the spotting which is not natural right there mm -hmm. yeah okay. so you, you wake up one morning you're having intercourse with your partner and pop there's some bleeding there's some you should be alarmed actually mm -hmm. as the cancer progresses you get the low abdominal pains either because of the lesion or because of the pressure at the, at the low abdomen you're mm -hmm. getting there's a lesion that is there there's a mass that is there what where that does it create the pressure it creates the pressure at the at the lower part of the abdomen abdomen yeah so the you lower part yeah so where we usually you know for for ladies when they're having their period yeah. there's usually mm -hmm. the, cramping. the cramping so is it is it the same yeah, yeah it's the same around the same region mm -hmm. the the uterus is just a small organ when it is not it's not gravid it's just we say it's like our yeah our fist, eh? fist uh -huh. so at the at the end of the of the or at the beginning do you call it at the beginning that is where the cervix is mm. so if you find the pressure it's coming from the the cervix it's at the lower region at mm. the cervical region during menstrual cramps it's the uterus that cramps and the pressure is sent downwards so this uh -huh. uh, there's a there's a lesion or there's a mass that is starting to grow at around the cervical region so the pressure goes up to the either to the uterus will be having the cramps or the pain that is maybe dull there's a pain that is une unexplainable or at the lower legion exactly at the pelvic region mm -hmm. you have a lot of pain as the lesion as the lesion or the mass continues either to enlarge in size or grow the pain will will go to will reach to the back mm -hmm. because they are they are they, that's the associated organs are there that the back and all that okay and maybe as at, at an advanced stage yeah, of which we should not even be talking about the an advanced, advanced stage, stage because you'd uh, have yeah, passed should, through this one exactly mm -hmm. at an advanced stage you'll have like you'll have you're not able to pass tool because the the lesion or the tumor is pressing at the at the rectum which had which is at the back You'll have maybe some pain during urinating or something because the the blood is also compressed, and then maybe the lower limbs will be starting. You'll have some pain, some edema because the pressure is going downwards. Downwards. Yes. Okay. And also maybe for the ladies before that, before even we talk about the intramenstrual bleeding, we should talk about the discharge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get you get women telling you that oh I only have the normal discharge Ayata, which is a normal discharge. <laughs> but then you know which is a normal discharge <laughs> topic for another day. <laughs> so I, and you should tell us which is a normal <laughs> discharge. <laughs> <laughs> the only discharge you should have should come when you are fertile during ovulation. Uh -huh. Anything else should be something alarming. Uh, Maybe okay. once in a while you should have the candid discharge because of the hormonal irregularities. Mm -hmm. Maybe when the the estrogen is so high and all that. Yeah? But when you have a discharge, candid discharge, brownish discharge, in a ikona kaharufu kidogo girlfriend what are you talking about you need to, you need to, to go to your gynecologist yes yes and yes yes start checking yes 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 mm -hmm. yes okay so those are the symptoms let me just run through them again mm -hmm. you said the uh discharge no yeah, the discharge, discharge. a brown discharge yeah. you know something that doesn't mm -hmm. happen during ovulation mm -hmm. or the normal mm -hmm. one then we go to um the bleeding yes. uh, that is abnormal not abnormal, the normal menstrual yeah. bleeding mm -hmm. uh, irregular bleeding and mm -hmm. all that in term post uh, post menopausal bleeding post menopausal mm -hmm. bleeding mm -hmm. and then the pain the cramps yeah. you know the lower mm -hmm. your lower stomach mm -hmm. you know abdomen mm -hmm. and then there's after that it progresses now to the back mm -hmm. you know now you have pain at the back mm -hmm. then you have p uh, problem mm -hmm. with uh, going for a long call because mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. there's pressure to the rectum mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then um apart from that then your lower yeah, limbs yep, now yep, yep, they yep. become problematic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it affects the lower region mm -hmm, a lot mm -hmm. okay I'm a, i think i'm a good student i don't know how you're, you're <laughs> trying to 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 avoid the sexual part of it but oh Lisa yeah too. and also yes <laughs> <laughs> so are too, yeah, but it's yeah. there. It's yeah, there. You have so to tell them. 
pain during sexual yep. intercourse yep. or yep. bleeding yep. after okay. sexual intercourse. Yep. It should be alarming. That's, that's yep. alarming. Yep. You should need. And I love what you've said. You also said it last time that this has symptoms that you might go to the doctor and you're told that ah, it's probably hormonal mm -hmm. imbalance mm -hmm. because a lot of ladies mm -hmm. have hormonal mm -hmm. imbalance. Mm -hmm. It's something very common. Mm -hmm. It's there. But at the back of your head, you should also ask yourself what, what else is, could it be? Yes. Yeah, what sure. else could it be? Just mm -hmm. to get that out of the way so you, yeah. ca you can do screening yeah. or you should do screening just to mm -hmm. make sure that mm -hmm. everything is mm -hmm. fine right mm -hmm. tell us about now the screening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how does it go so screening i think this is one of the cancers that screening is so widely available like you go to the dispensary it is there mm -hmm. so there are different types of screening we can start with the basic then we advance. Mm -hmm. There is something we call viavili, that is screening using either acetic acid and lugos. Currently, we are doing away with lugos, so we are only doing acetic acid. You go to your health facility, you just get, it's a five minutes, not more than 10 minutes. Very non invasive. Mm -hmm. We just go check out the, we just apply the acetic acid, we will observe the cells when they change. Eh? In case the cells have cancer or suspicious, eh? when you apply acetic acid, it turns to white, acetyl white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's that white, white part. That, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the changes will turn to that and we'll be like, oh, this could be it. So we'll send you to either you do a cytology, we do a pap smear. A pap smear, maybe you can go to a higher level of a facility in level. Level 3, level 4, and above. We just go scoop some cells from your cervical region. Still not painful, non-invasive. Just scoop some cells, take them to the laboratory, and we do a cytology. It will tell us, oh, this, we found some cells that look like cancer. Yeah? We can have mm -hmm. HPV test itself. It's available. And the beauty about HPV test, you can even do it at home. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you do it, it's more specific because we are really going for the HPV itself. Okay. It will give us the specificity and it will give us the, it is specific and it is, in a tombia, the amount, yeah? Mm -hmm. it, yeah, so it's even much better because it, uh, it can be, a, I guess you have HPV but at this level, not alarming. Okay, and the so infection you know is so high, yeah, no like that. So HPV, it's a bit expensive. So you you You'd don't rather yeah. go for a pap smear. You do a pap smear, mm -hmm. yeah. You okay. do a pap smear, but if you can afford, just go for the HPV test. Okay. You can go for a colonoscopy, colposcopy. That is sorry, colposcopy. Mm -hmm. We'll just go to observe the cells under a microscope, and maybe you'll get biopsies from them. Mm -hmm. So those are the screening modalities we have. Okay. Yeah. The first one that you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. you said it's non-invasive. Non-invasive. Oh, yeah. Is it a blood test? How no, 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 no. We just do some screening at the cervical region. Uh -huh, it's yeah. screening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just get into your cervical region, very friendly procedure, maybe just a little bit of discomfort, mm -hmm. not painful. And then we'll be able to visualize. Actually, visualization is one of the screening. You just come in and visualize your, your cervix. If it is, this is, you don't even need to be told. Mm -hmm. I don't even need to progress and do tests. You're like, hey, this one. And we just do a biopsy. So visualization, we'll visualize your cervix. Then we'll, we'll paint it with the acetic acid so that we can be able to see the changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't, you don't need anything. With my own naked eyes, I'll, I'll be sure. Okay, there's usually a perception mm -hmm. for ladies that have gone to, for pap smear. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the common one that people mm -hmm. know about. Mm -hmm. And it's usually also free, mm -hmm. right? Offered free okay. in some. And if it is, it's not expensive. It's not expensive it's not either. Expensive, yeah. yeah. So some people say that it's mm -hmm. a bit uncomfortable, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I understand it's necessary. So mm -hmm. maybe you will tell us. Okay, about it. it's uncomfortable because we have to. We have to invade to you. To get to your service. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there is whatever instrument you use. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is where the discomfort comes in. Okay. Yeah. And for someone who's going for this test, mm -hmm. is it 
uh, for those that are not sexually active or mm -hmm. have never been sexually active, mm -hmm. do they need to go for this test? Not or? necessarily. Mm -hmm. We actually recommend from the age 20 of 23. Okay. Yes. Uh, that is when we start doing our test. That's when we start maybe doing the viaveries mm -hmm. and all that. Below that, not unless you have some issues, like you've seen something that is abnormal, mm -hmm. but we recommend from the age of 23 onwards. Oh, no. We do it every annually, like for every year, every year. You need to go you for need the to test. do at least the basic via Vili. Mm -hmm. In five years, make sure you have done your pap smear test. HPV test, we do it with five years, three to five years span of time. Mm -hmm. what, what is there is, the moment Iros gets the HPV, before it progresses to become cancer, cancer it takes 10 to 15 years. Oh, it takes 10 to Imagine. 15 years. Wow. It takes 10 to 15 years. So it can just be in your system growing, growing, growing. Growing, 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 growing. And that is why we say actually screening is one of the preventive me measures. Because mm -hmm. when you come, I screen you on yearly basis. By the time I'm saying, oh, there's a change, it will be at the pre mm -hmm. And we can capture it. You remember what you said last time? Anytime we get it at a pre stage, it is treatable, it is curable. And you're done. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through all the all other stuff, the chemo and all that. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about, maybe you'll come to the treatment modalities later, but the best thing about cervical cancer is that the treatments are so vast, like we have a range of treatments. Mm -hmm. That is the beauty about it all. Cervical cancer. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And we want to go now to the treatment, mm -hmm. now that you've mentioned mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. What are the different kind of treatment and mm -hmm. for what level? Because we understand that there are different stages mm -hmm. of cancer, stage mm -hmm. one, stage two, stage three, mm -hmm. up to stage four, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what are, what are these treatments and how are they like? Mm -hmm. So last time we discussed about, I think I'll keep on referring last time so that you can get into yeah, power yeah, with yeah. this. Yeah. We discussed about the staging and we said maybe for, for cervical cancer, the, there is a pre stage where maybe you have the infection with the HPV, but the cells have not changed, so they have not transformed mm -hmm. to become cancerous. So at that stage, we have so many options. One of the options is something we call thermoabrasion. Mm -hmm. Thermoabrasion, this is where we use some heat to kill the cells. And the beauty about thermoabrasion is it can be done at a dispensary level. Oh, so it's just a... You, you just know, walk you just in, I come screen you, and I'm, I'm trained, I won't miss on the, on the cells. I won't miss on that little patch that I see. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sure, like, this is a precancellous lesion. So, me with my thermoablator there, we just use some nodes, we hit, we preheat all, we hit them. Then, to natural makidogo, mm -hmm. we just put a little bit of heat. What does heat do? It Kills. destroys. Mm -hmm. And then you're good. Oh, all right. We do the test after six months and you're like, hey, you're free. it's good, we're done. Virus. So precancellors, also at the precancellors we can do something we call LIP, that is laser excision. That one maybe you have to go to a main hospital, whatever people call main hospitals. You have to go to a main hospital and then we are able to tunakata using, mm -hmm. yeah, tunakata yonyama, that, that particular oh. place, using the lasa. Uh -huh. Yeah, we exit, we, we exition it, all the cupboard that is there. Oh. And then you're good. Okay. That is the pre cancellous pre So why should so you progress to the cancellous So it's easier it. to deal with, you're, yeah. you're free back to your normal self, everything goes on fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, after that. and after that, maybe for the stage one, stage two, stage three, the main modality treatment modality is surgery. And like for in many other cancers, surgery is the main modality. Mm -hmm. uh, That's we, for stage two and three? No, no, no. Even for stage one. Uh -huh, yeah. okay. For stage one, we said it's confined to the cervix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically confined to the cervix. Maybe the size is a bit smaller. So we'll be able to, to, ex to, it. Yeah, yeah. to exition it completely. Mm -hmm. And maybe you go through the other supportive modalities like radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. Also for stage one and stage two, the beauty of it all is we have something we call internal radiation that is brachytherapy. So this is where we, we do radiation specifically to the lesion. We said at this stage the lesion is confined to the to the cervical lesion. Mm -hmm. So hygiene to the uterus or hygiene with the vagina. The vagina. Mm -hmm. So we are able to hit it. We do radiation. In Kenya, we do 
in Nakuru there is brachytherapy. So it, it works. Just it fine. works. Mm -hmm. We are able to precisely to naguze ile lesion iko pale. Precisely we are doing we are, we are taking the radiation ions to that particular place. Area. Yeah. Okay. So you're not involving the whole peric region unlike for the external beam radiation. Mm -hmm. The external beam radiation this is where we maybe for 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 cancer that has progressed or also it is it is used as a supportive. Eh? We maybe you've done the surgery and outaki kumis kukwe kuna two cells pali to ribaki. So we do the the external beam radiation. We do radiation around the pelvic region. And you know the pelvic region has other organs. Yeah. It has what and what it has the bladder. Mm -hmm. It has the urethra. It, it has the vagina. It has the anal you know, yeah, so yeah. at one point in effect, mm -hmm. so, so. Okay. so this chemotherapy, That's systemic, we talked about it last time, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, we can do chemotherapy, mm -hmm. so imagine all those ranges of treatment. There, there's a lot, there's, there's a, a whole lot. range. There's Tell us about hysterectomy because um, mm -hmm. for some with cervical cancer, mm -hmm. they have to have, uh, yeah. You know, either total hysterectomy or partial hysterectomy. Uh -huh. So hysterectomy is mostly done. It's the ex we, it's the surgery. It's a mod it's a surgical modality for treatment of cervical cancer, and mostly either stage two, where it has either either touch the the uterus, and you have to get the cervix the the whole of the cervix out and part of the uterus and part all, of the uterus. Yeah, all all the uterus mm -hmm. and maybe part of the of the vagina because oh. yeah for the we've said the vagina is on the lower side the uterus is on the upper, upper side. side so if this is a lesion that is affected mm. when it progresses where will it progress it's either yende ju am i ready cheni senior kweli am i can hit the two so okay. at one point you are able to either remove the whole of the cervix part of the vagina or part of the uterus or the whole of the uterus it will depend with the yeah, mm -hmm. with the imaging. The imaging. Yeah. All right. What yeah. about stage four of cervical cancer? Hoping that we no no one gets to Indeed. do that. I can trust them. Yeah. But stage four. For those that are in stage four currently. Stage four, it's more of palliative. Mm -hmm. We do palliative. Whatever modality we do, whatever it is, it's either radiation, chemotherapy. It is more of palliative. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. stage four means it has touched other organs. So that we cannot be so specific, mm -hmm. yeah. We cannot be so specific about about security or what. We just go to the palliative. Shall tell us about palliative for those that are just hearing it for this okay. part time. What is palliative care? Palliative, palliative. When you're talking about palliative in treatment terms, this means that we have exhausted maybe most of the most of the treatment options and the goal for this particular we are not we are not treating to cure this person we are treating either to reduce the symptoms so that we can make the life the life a little bit better the symptoms can either be pain maybe the bleeding mm -hmm. all that so whatever else we'll be doing mm -hmm. we are not curing we are just, just managing. managing the same terms so that you can make the life a bit, a little bit easier and better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is all about palliative. Okay. Yeah. So t now, um, I understand that cervical cancer is one of those stigmatized type of cancer. I know cancer in general is, mm -hmm. has some stigma around mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. but cervical cancer has some, st you know, type of yeah. stigma. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is this? Okay. This is from my personal point of view i don't know if it is documented anywhere mm -hmm. but i think whatever whatever it is is in alignment with maybe documentation yeah? when we talk about cervical cancer we are talking about reproductive health we are talking about the 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 modalities of transmission so for one we've said uh, cervical cancer mostly mm -hmm. but they didn't talk about the Okay, the modalities of okay we talked about the modalities of transmission, uh -huh. but the risk factors. Uh -huh. Some of the risk factors is multiple sexual partners. partners. Yeah, uh -huh. and when you say multiple, more than five. I have to go and get it. So when you talk about sexual partners, what 
kumaanisha Rosa kona bwana na kona mpango wa kando mm-hmm. na kona sugar daddy mnawaisha aje na kona jenzi au oh, sponsors yeah. masponyo <laughs> yeah <laughs> like five uh-huh. all tulikuwa na huyu alafu tumeachana tuko na huyu tumia we na span of like six months tumia tena mwingine mwingine to market tukitoka well, we 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 tu, unarudi unaoga unalia so it is said statistics say that out of every five sexual partners you have one ni lazima kuwe na hpv Oh. out of every five so kwa mind yako na juu shaanza kwa hesabu sasa sijui ni mgani kati ya so out of every five sexual partners okay. one of them has hpv hpv so when you're talking about stigma ukikuja kwa hospitali upate rose hapo and uko hapo na kufanya hpv test na nipate eh hey, is in cause the first thing that you'll learn in my mind will be like maybe mm. Uh, what is your life multiple sexual partners multiple sexual partners mm. another risk factor is Uh, untreated sexually transmitted infections mm-hmm. because when you have the stis eh? mm-hmm. because a lot of inflammation so at a yo hpv kidogo ilikuanga on the surface sasa imepata imepenya kwa cells huko ndani imeenda ku establish huko ndani because imepata pathway so and when you talk about stis what comes with stis yeah sexual of course relations thank you uh-huh. thank you thank okay. you another risk factor is early childbearing how so ah and when you say how? about early childbearing we are uh-huh. talking about 12 years okay yeah see at so 20 you know, i'm a 30 mature, you know early pre- yeah. kind of so so this these young girls that are getting babies at 12 15 the reproductive system is not even ready for that it's still developing mm-hmm. and then you cause a lot of trauma mm-hmm. what happens one of the of one of the of the maybe physiologies is like when you get the trauma <coughs> you mm-hmm. the cells when they are when they are repairing themselves they become like aggressive like eh we have to shield ourselves from whatever we've been mm-hmm. so they change and when they change it means there'll be some cells that are repressed in that that will be withstanding the trauma that they experienced and the cells are abnormal mm-hmm. in that particular region it's like i usually give an example with with your mouth eh? the lining of the mouth which is so similar with our reproductive system eh? if you get burned leo mechomeka the inner part what happens see those cells zina zina kwa they are abraised yeah yeah so maybe they turn they change and they bring some new cells that will be able to withstand the burning mm-hmm. so those cells that develop at that particular place are abnormal Because. to that particular region uh-huh. so in future they can bring some some issues some right. complications and also when you start sexual activities at an early stage this goes for our teens mm. the, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of bruising there's a lot of friction and what happens mimi kama cell nitaanza kujidefend eh hey, huyu mtu ananibrui sana maybe this is not where i'm supposed to be maybe cell b is only supposed to come here kwa sababu ako able to stand there they are the bruising a lot mm-hmm. because the youngsters the 9 the 10 the 12s the bodies are not the, the cells are not ready for the sexual activity mm-hmm. so hazina hizo hazina hizo nini uh, strength to withhold to yeah, stand yeah. and all that So that is one of the risk factors. Okay. Is of it zote ni miongea. They are they are running around one thing. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the sexual bit of it. Yeah. And that's that explains why the, the stigma. stigma is and also the stigma it. can come with I don't want to go to the health center and start explaining that oh, I'm having some I'm having some discharge that is false smelling. Mhm. Unaona? Hiyo tu yenyewe ina ina kuputoff eh? ina kuweka stigma at a personal level do i really want to go and start exposing myself mm-hmm. i think maybe if i just do some douching i think maybe i just do some maybe thorough cleaning but it's not it's not a problem with hygiene it's actually something that's developing but i don't want to go to the health center and to all to the facility and start saying that i'm having some discharge that is false smelling because i'm afraid of well, how of they'll perceive me exactly okay yeah. and we need to get out of that because your Completely. health matters and it's Completely. critical that you get um 
early medical intervention. We that said early help. diagnosis, prompt treatment, lead to cure. Mm -hmm. Late diagnosis, late treatment. It's a bit can, yeah. it's, it can be a bit late, so we don't want mm -hmm. to get to that. Finally, yes. as we close on this particular topic, how is the management like of cervical cancer? Mm -hmm. Uh, for those that have it already, how's the management like? And then uh, your final call mm -hmm. to those that are watching. So management is, I think it's basically supportive. Yeah, we have talked about the treatment part of it. We said about the modalities. Going through radiation is not easy. It causes a lot of psychological trauma. It causes a lot of social stigma and all that financial burden that comes with it. So basically the the management should be supportive from both the family and the medical part of it. Let's talk about nutrition. Yeah, this this is a person who is needs to to be taken care of nutrition wise, healthy mm -hmm. diets and all that so that you can be able to withstand everything that is coming with the disease and the process of treatment. So supportive, holistic support mm -hmm. for the patient, yeah. Okay. You've talked about the final call? Yes. Before okay. that, yeah, we, we know that there's the H, HPV vaccine yes, that is yes, being yes, given yes, yes. To, to young girls. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Is it rec a recommended? Do you recommend it? I personally do recommend it, yeah. We've talked about HPV at the age of 9 to 14 years when the girls are not sexually active. So when HPV is administered, eh, it helps, it creates, it creates um, the, the, the immune system. It boosts the immune system. It alerts the antibodies that there is HPV and it is able to, to fight against it at a, young, at a young age. My take is always this, eh? mm -hmm. get the HPV for your kids, for your children. In future, if it comes, you'll be like, I did what was supposed to be done at that particular stage. Mm -hmm. Anything else that has come would not was way beyond me. Unless, like, I wish I would have given, or I wish I would have taken my child for the HPV. Mm -hmm. My campaign is always, let's go to the schools, let's get the, the, the HPV to the young girls. Actually, even the young boys, they should get sit me somehow on your careers. Yeah. So if you don't, if you don't, if you don't vaccinate them, it is there. Mm -hmm. Maybe not available in the government facilities, but if you go to the high-end facilities, you'll get you'll the get them. Yeah, for the boys. Okay. So it's part of the preventive measures, and this is where I think we should put much resources. Let's prevent. We've said it's 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. So if we capture this girl at the age of 14, even before she becomes sexually active. By the time she's becoming sexually active, I hope so at 20, she has already the immunity build up. Mm -hmm. So, so. Yes. so it will be so much easier to manage. The body will be so much easier to create the, the HPV within. The, the antibodies are already awakened. They are alert. Mm -hmm. Just in case kuna kitu kama yotu likuwa tumeona, we are ready to fight. We, we've already sensitized the, the body. The body. The yeah. body is ready for it. So, he, uh, as like we do for say, TB. Yeah, yeah. prevention mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. better than cure. For it. Sure. Okay. So what is the final call to, to those that are watching? If they are to take something from this particular conversation, what would that be? Uh, huh. I think we shouldn't be having this conversation in future about cervical cancer. And I don't even know why we have it. Like, we know the cause, mm -hmm. so it's preventable. It, we can treat the cause. We have the, the screening measures that are readily available and they are wide. We have the treatment modalities, Nimob Sana. So I think as a country or globally, we shouldn't be talking about cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. So the question would be, where are we going wrong? Because statistics wise, mm -hmm. breast cancer is the leading in, in terms of incidence rate. For every, it's high, Ikoju. It's more, it's higher than the cervical cancer. But for mm -hmm. mortality, cervical cancer is the leading. Why? Why is it leading in mortality? Why less there is, we know the cause. Mm -hmm. Why less there is prevention, there is the screening that is available. Why less yeah. there is the, why less there is the treatment modality. I think we should have eradicated all this. We, sh we shouldn't even be talking, talking about, about it, it at anymore. all, at all. So the question will be, where are we going wrong? Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to go back to the drawing board and re-strategize? So that we can get the children or the youngsters 
when they are still at a tender age before they 10 to 15 years just immediately they start becoming sexually active i think that is where we should we should, should start concentrate we should her. concentrate rather than maybe bring the, the more blatters and all that they are good they'll help us treat but i will i think it's the high time we change our strategy I mean, we re-strategize completely mm -hmm. where are we putting our resources and also where is the stigma coming from mm -hmm. and why are the women going for screening is it because the stigma is coming from the medical persons or is it the, st the stigma is coming from us as individuals uh -huh. that is why we are afraid to go to the facility mm -hmm. and and my take is also just like we did with HIV, HIV. Uh -huh. it came to a point like it was professional initiated Ukiingia kwa hospitali hata kabla uone daktari unafaa kufanya nini HIV test HIV test so mm. even for for HPV it's there kabla uende kuona to receive any reproductive health services can you get that screening 5 minutes na ku screen and then tunaendelea family planning tunaendelea whatever else it whatever. is okay. i think we should actually restart a complete strategization of that yeah. i yeah. think that uh, mm. is quite profound mm -hmm. very necessary because mm -hmm. when you focus on prevention then mm -hmm. we won't be talking about the high rate of mortality yeah. that is the number of deaths mm -hmm. associated by nine deaths in a day for cervical cancer nine deaths in a day for cervical cancer right. so we definitely need to to do away with that mm -hmm. thank you very much rose for coming on board and sharing this amazing insights with us yeah. we hope to have you again to speak and uh, on breast cancer that so that we raise awareness on oh, that yeah, yeah. and then we move to prostate cancer yeah, and all yeah, these types yeah, common yeah. types of yeah, cancer so so that we just you know you know these are the symptoms that ha this is how mm -hmm. i could prevent it mm -hmm. and uh I'm sure that uh, we live a healthy life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All right. So where can people get you on your socials? <laughs> I tell you, I'm not so active. I think I should be following you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I'm just so active in Facebook now. Uh -huh. Yeah. First, look, get me in my facility. Let me pick your name, facility. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> Come to Maragua Sub-County Hospital. Utapata mm -hmm. Rose, the oncology nurse. Go to Moranga, we have an oncology clinic, not fully prepped, but we can give you, we can advise you, we can talk to you. You'll get my colleagues there, Kina Joseph, mm -hmm. Kina Anne, and the rest. And also you can follow me on my Facebook, Rose the Oncology Nurse. Nos, can you listen, when was the last time I posted? <laughs> but I promised yeah. I'll be more active. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Rose the Oncology yeah, Nurse. Yeah, Rose the Oncology at, Nurse. Uh, yeah. At Facebook at and Facebook. your facility yeah. at mm -hmm. Maragua mm -hmm. Hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's where you can find her. That has been our conversation uh, on cervical cancer. But remember, being a Thursday, we are also having some light discussions, Palekwa socials, and I just want to read some. Uh, of the feedback on the question that we have asked you today, which is, let me just get it. And uh, we have some of you who have already commented right there. I'll just read a few. Isaac Makana, I'm going to Well, Akopale NGC, mtafute file NGC, utampata. Lamek Omariba nasama kutoka kisi marachi, bochi, morning too. Thank you for tuning in. Morris Maina nasama, I'm jealous. He is taller than me. Uh, yes, of course he is. I think he's the tallest man we have seen so far. <laughs> and then uh, Dennis Anelka nasama, ha ha. Yep, that boy from Vihiga Joe. Anyway, I'm enjoying your show. Thank you for tuning in, Dennis. Pablo Art Dude and Sama Val. Always killing me. Val, where are you at? Where are you at? She'll be here to finish you completely. The hashtag again is why in the morning or if you like Thursday vibes. Tell us what you think. Uh, you can also get us on, on our personal handles at Stephanie Yetta and at Kalamiva. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with more.